Before I start my own rant, I just want to add a, a postscript to uh, Rufus's rant, because it's actually better than mine, uh, which is really annoying. Uh, but the idea of government giving a damn, I met the, uh, the then licensing minister about four years ago, who was introduced to me, uh, I was introduced to him in a similar way to how I've just been introduced, and he said, so Pete, tell me, what can government do to help the British beer industry? And I said, um, if I go to a government function, if I was ever lucky enough to be invited to a diplomatic function, what drinks would I be served? And he suddenly spotted someone on the other side of the room uh, that he had to urgently go and speak to. Because if you go to the House of Common Strangers bar, they serve Beck's Veer. If you go to the House of Commons souvenir shop, they serve you a, a souvenir branded House of Commons French wine and a souvenir House of Commons uh, Portuguese port. They do not serve any British beer. Um, if you go to a government diplomatic function, you'll be served French wine and Belgian lager. Now, imagine going to the French embassy and being served Australian wine. They'll be rioting in the streets of Paris. So I think that's kind of an illustrative thing uh, about how much government does care about food and drink. My rant's about cider. And uh, in particular, it's about premium fruit cider. Uh, does anyone drink premium fruit cider like Copperberg and, and Recorderlig? Of course not, because you're in Abergavenny any Food Festival crowd, you've got much better taste than that. Uh, now, the thing about premium fruit cider is it's growing the cider market. It's an absolute boom. Um, pubs can't flog enough of it, and pubs do need all the help they can get to survive. It's good that pubs are selling something they're making a lot of profit on. Uh, and so I'm not entirely... Um, opposed to premium fruit cider. I just have three problems with it. Uh, one, it's not premium. Two, it's not made out of fruit. And three, it's not cider. Uh, and I think this is quite confusing, and I think it does a bit of harm to the cider market. Uh, if you go on to Copperberg's uh, website, now, does anyone uh, have a guess? What is cider made out of? Apples. apples. Cider's made out of apples. Copperberg, premium fruit cider, is made out of naturally occurring soft water, fruit juice, sugar, citric acid, flavouring, and potassium sorbate. Recorderlig consists of fresh spring water, pear and apple wines, sugar, acids, citric acid and sodium citric, berry flavours, preservatives, E202, E220 and caramel colour. That sounds like good cider to me. Cider, on the other hand, as you've correctly identified, tastes of apples. It's made of apples. It should taste of apples. Uh, and the character of any cider depends on the apples that are, that are blended to make it. Apples come in all different sorts of varieties. Uh, there's as much diversity and breadth in the varieties of apples that go in cider as there is grapes that go in wine. There's single varieties, there's blends, uh, and the skill of blending different apples is, uh, is a skill that's on a par with, with great winemaking. And there's some beautiful ciders here uh, today that are a testament to that. Now, of course, after going through strawberry and lemon and lime and um, every other fruit flavour you can think of, um, I went on to Recorderlig's website and they've, they've had this amazing idea. They've made an apple cider. They've made a naked apple variant. And so I clicked onto their website and said, OK, if you go on the Magnus website, Magnus is not the best cider in the world. I think we can mostly agree on that. But Magnus talks about the apples they use. They use 17 different varieties of apple. Um, even They use more Dabinet apple in the draft variety than they do in the bottle variety because it's not going to be poured over ice. They do actually care about apples to a degree, uh, not as much as a real cider maker does, but they do pay lip service to apples. So Recorderlig's apple flavour website uh, made from the purest Swedish spring water traditional yet modern recorded like apple cider is best served over ice for a crisp cool and refreshing experience not a single word about how many apples are in there what percentage of apple juice there is or anything now the British government do care a little bit about cider three years ago they cracked down on claims like this they got really tough and they imposed minimum standards if you want to call yourself a cider you've got to actually step up to the plate if you want to call yourself a cider in this country, your cider has to be at least 35% apple juice. 35% apple juice. And that apple juice is mainly uh, from concentrates that's been shipped in from cider. Now, we are lucky enough to be in a part of the world that makes stunning cider. The Welsh cider industry has grown from almost nothing 20 years ago to having over 50 cider producers, and several of the best of them are here today. So I can't tell anyone what to drink and what not to drink, but I can encourage you that if you do fancy a cider, then check out someone like Blangoni uh, or uh, Once Upon a Tree or go 
Watkin or any other cider makers here today, if you think you don't like cider, then go and try them as well, because you might find that you're quite surprised and that what you don't like is commercial, industrial, mass-produced crap, which shouldn't be called cider, and the real stuff is something that you never even knew existed, and yes, it does have terroir. Thank you very much.